family and hello Facebook friends. And I'm wanting to jump on here tonight. I'm going to I'm going to talk about fasting. And the reason I'm I'm talking about fasting is because it's the best way to lose weight. I mean, I've had so many successful people. In fact, this very day, I've got several of my clients that are doing some 24-hour and some 48-hour fast. And you're like, I can never fast. Well, I'm about to show you why you can fast and how it's going to work for you. And not just to lose weight, but for so many, many, many other reasons. All right. So last night I talked about ketosis. And the reason I started with that is because it's, I would just say it's almost impossible for you to fast if you're not in ketosis. And the reason is because you'll be hungry, but if you're in ketosis, you won't be hungry, all right? So that's the benefit of being on the ketogenic diet before you start fasting. And that's kind of how I transition my clients. I'm like, let's get you into ketosis, get you moving toward ketosis, which we talked about how to know that last night. You're satisfied, you don't have cravings, you're less hungry, you have a more mental focus, you have sharper memory, and you have less urination at night, okay? So that's, that's ketosis, basically, in a nutshell. Um, and, and, you know, the reason I strongly encourage ketosis for so many people is because it helps solve so many metabolic disorders, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol. You know, your body burns the best fuel it can burn is fat. And so all of those misconceptions about eating fat makes you fat, no, it's eating sugar and carbs that makes you fat, and I'm, I'm about to explain some of that to you. All right, so here we go. All right, so why if, why intermittent fasting is the best way to lose weight? All right, so here's what happens. It's, it's really simple. It's not complicated. Our bodies appear to be complicated, but really they function so well when we treat them right. And they do what they're supposed to do. So here's what happens. As soon as you start fasting, you take food away from you, you don't have food, your blood glucose drops. I mean, it, it's just what happens, okay? And, and so as soon as that happens, your blood gl glucose, glucose drops, your, your counter-regulatory hormones kick in, okay? They're trying to regulate your blood sugar okay because that's what insulin does but if insulin's not there then your cortisol your growth hormone and your noradrenaline will kick in well those are actually building hormones they actually are stimulating hormones all right They're, we call them activators all right so you want those hormones and when you have those for instance growth hormone is a rebuilding hormone think about it it's a growth hormone it causes regeneration Noradrenaline causes your adrenaline to be up. That's why you have more energy when you get into ketosis and you start fasting. You have more energy. So uh, when, you, when you get into fasting and you start fasting, you're actually going to be regenerating and renewing. renewing. And theoretically, uh, the benefit of fasting has been proven for, for thousands of years. It's the, it's the best way to heal your body. And... So you get benefits for arthritis, decrease in pain. That's one of the first things my clients notice is their joint aches go away. The second thing is Alzheimer's. Your body actually, the sugar and all the toxins that we're putting in our body doesn't just go to our body, it goes to our brain. And so we notice mental clarity as soon as you start fasting. And then cancer. Studies have been shown that if you fasted for three to four days, twice a year, you would decrease your risk of cancer. Uh-oh, got a low battery here. You would decrease your risk of cancer by uh, 95%. I mean, I think, I think it would be worth it. A lot of studies about uh, starving cancer with fasting and what all happens in your body, okay? So, but what happens is when you, is when you cut off the glucose that's going in or the, or the sugar or the carbs or food, any kind of food's gonna cause your insulin to rise. What happens is your body immediately starts pulling that glucose out of your, out of itself, okay? Out of it where it's stored, okay? In the liver and different places. 
And so, uh, so you're opening up the fuel storage of your body. And so your body is saying, I don't really need to eat anything because there's plenty stored here. It's kind of like the bear hibernating in winter. He's stored up a lot, and while he's sleeping, he just burns that. And what I say to my clients when they say, well, I'm hungry, I'm like, well, look down. There's your dinner. Eat it. You've stored it. You've had it there. You paid a lot of money for it. It was probably some, you know, whatever it was, and you've been storing it. Your body actually does that. I've got a demo that I do with the water. Maybe I'll do that one tomorrow night. It's the sugar water, and it shows, well, it's actually your blood, and it shows that you really only need about a teaspoon of sugar a day. And most people are getting like 35 to 36 teaspoons a day in all of the sandwiches and oatmeal and bread and all the things that they're eating that really turn to sugar, which then, of course, turn to fat. Okay, so... So, so listen at this, and I think this will make sense to you. So when you start fasting and you cut your calories back to about 600 or 800 calories, which I'm not encouraging you to, talk, to think about cutting calories, but if you do, then what will happen is your body can pull about 1,200 good calories from the fat that you stored. So you got a lot of, a lot of stored fuel that you can use, and it's readily accessible, but not if you're taking in fuel. So that's what fasting is. It's eliminating taking in food in a, in, and just taking in food in a certain window. And during that fasting time, allowing your body, I call it to shred fat or to burn fat, okay? So, uh, so your body is actually working with itself to get rid of that excess stored fat that you have been using. Okay, so... I'm about to finish up here, and so here's what I want you to know. So on day two of your fasting, this is what happens after you start. You get like a 12-hour, and then you go to an 18-hour, 16, 20-hour fast. Ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, it's, it's what lets you your body know it's hungry. It'll peak, but then it drops way down. So if you can get to this place in the fast, like into your 20, 16, 20, 24 hours, then it's going to drop. So ghrelin drops, your hunger drops, and guess what else drops? The fat burns. So that's why you want to really concentrate on your fasting. So I'm going to ask you a simple question. What causes us to gain weight? What is it? Yeah, it's insulin. Your body eats food. It produces insulin, and insulin takes that sugar and makes it, or that food, that, that process, and makes it usable for your body. So doesn't it make sense to take in less food so you make less insulin so your body can actually burn what's stored on it, okay? So that was just a real simple explanation. It really, like I said, is simple. If you don't take in food, then your body will use what's been stored, okay? So uh, one of the things I teach my clients, and I, I met with two people today that signed up for the challenge, and you know, I said, what this really is, it's changing the way you view food. You see food as fuel, not something to comfort you. Now, yes, I'll enjoy something I enjoy every now and then, but I don't see it as what's going to complete me. What's going to complete me is good health, and it will complete you too, all right? So when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So when you change the way you look at that food, it's going to change. You're going to see it as fuel or poison. And so it's up to you. You get to choose it. You get to choose your future health. And your body is what carries you around. So take good care of it. Learn how to fuel it properly so that it can perform. You wouldn't put dollar gas in your car. So don't put dollar food. Don't put cheap fast food in your body. Put good wholesome food and watch it perform. I just finished teaching an exercise class to my group and uh, my challengers and you know at 64 I get to do that. I don't have to. I get to. I get to exercise because I want my body to be strong and when I call on it I want to build my immune system and that's what exercise does. So People say, well, it's hard. It's hard to not eat this. And when everybody says, what's really hard? 
What's easy about disease? What's easy about aches and pains? You know? Okay, so I think some of y'all, I almost hesitate to take it down, but I think I will, just to show you. Okay, so look at these beautiful amaryllises. I mean, I have enjoyed them so much over the holiday. It's just three bulbs, and all I did was put water in there, okay? And, and, and they're blooming, and, and they're not bulging anywhere. They're not sickly. They're just beautifully blooming. And the reason is because they take in the nutrients that they need. They don't, they don't take more than they need. They take just what they need. And that's what you want to get to is you want to get to the place that you're taking in what you need to perform. And not more than you need, not less than you need, but just what you need. And there, there is a magical way. It's not really even magical to find out what that is. And I'd love to help you do that. So message me and let's talk about either getting you in this challenge, which you can do it this week, or in the challenge coming up in January, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be opening up 40 slots. And I've had so many people say, I want to do it in January. I'd love it if you'd go ahead and start now, but you can join in January and I want to help you. So message me and let's get together. Have a great night.